I wasn't supposed to make this video and that is mostly because when I saw the trailer for What If, I was immediately like, this is not for me. I really didn't like the animation style, it really felt like a TV version of the Marvel's Avengers video game. I don't know if you've played it or simply heard about it, but the recent Marvel's Avengers video game was incredibly bad. Hulk, go stand on that thing over there, you dummy. Hulk, go stand on that thing, you dummy. Oh, okay, never mind, I just do it myself. It was basically just a very awkward cash machine that attracted everyone's attention with memorable superheroes and storylines from the MCU, and it didn't really have anything else. Anyways, I feel like Marvel's What If is going through the exact same problem, and let me tell you why. What If is an American animated anthology series created by AC Bridley, and all of the episodes are directed by Brian Andrews, who's been working with Marvel as a storyboard artist for almost 20 years. This is also the second MCU series that has a woman showrunner, the the first one being WandaVision with Jacqueline Schaffer. I thought it was an important thing to mention, especially since both the creators go by an abbreviated artist name. So Jacqueline Schaffer goes by Jack Schaffer and Ashley C. Bridley goes by A.C. Bridley. I don't really know if it's done consciously because people in the industry look down on women filmmakers or if it's just a fun choice. It's like, how come you get like the really interesting like existential question and I get the like rabbit food question? They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into <coughs> But I thought it was still an interesting question to raise. A second nine episode season is already in development just in case you're wondering, but it doesn't surprise me at all to be honest, especially because it's nothing special. And it's probably easy to make in comparison to huge films like Avengers Endgame. So the concept of what if is that Watu, aka one of the Watchers, is overseeing everything that is going on with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Bridley Ed has described the character as above everything else and compared him to a viewer of the Pizza Rat video. And I think here she's referring to the scene in Avengers Endgame that shows that Ant-Man was brought back from the quantum universe by a random rat that was just walking on the commands. She used it as an analogy to say that the Watcher has no interest in becoming friends with the rat, living amongst the rat or doing rat things. And that is basically the Watcher's relationship with humanity. And I kind of like that. The beginning of each new episode starts with this beautiful sense of cosmic horror, almost Twilight Zone-esque, where the Watcher is warning us of the danger of changing the right course of the timeline. Follow me and ponder the question, what if? And that is exactly what happens in each new episode of What If. We're presented with a new alternative take on the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we knew it. So two episodes have come out. Let's get down to Biston and start with everything that I liked about this series, which is basically the new landscapes that we get to explore. Since this is an animated series and not a live action movie, there aren't gonna be any problems with green screens and actors having to react to things that are not really there. The visuals in the first episode are pretty mad, but the second episode really showcases the potential of doing a high budget superhero animated show that is mainly aimed at adults. Because trust me, this is not for kids. And I'm saying this mostly because most of the references will go completely over the head of children and I'm pretty sure that this is a hundred percent just for adult Marvel fans. You saved my home world from a Kree invasion. All in a day's work. No, it took several days. Six in fact. Let us take a picture. I really love being in space though. I, I love that some of these shots look like beautiful comic book panels. You know the kind of comic book panels that are so detailed that they require a full A4 page or even a double page. And the second episode is just mesmerizing but at the same time it was drawing a lot from James Gunn's God of the galaxy so of course it looked vibrant and colorful. Also I really like the fact that Feige kept the creative teams of Loki and Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness informed of everything that was happening within the series and basically the creative team was actually talking about establishing a rule book regarding the multiverse and all of the different branching timelines and nexus events. And I love that mostly because it really grounds all of this weird science fiction stuff and it links everything together. So unfortunately for the series that is basically it for the stuff that I liked in the first two episodes. So let's head into the bad or the mediocre stuff. Starting with, funny enough, once again the animation stuff. Because I really, 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 really hate the way that every single character looks in this series. The faces look like plastic and it seemed like the creative team really wanted these animated characters to look like the real ones. We 
without ever going into ultra realism like they did for example in death love and robots if you've seen that series and the final result is a bunch of plastic looking human anime hybrids it really reminds me of the awkward work on the faces on alita battle angel or even the very early designs of the sonic movie I look at Peggy Carter and I don't believe anything that she's saying because she's perfectly stuck on that bizarre line in between animated and real. This made me really mad, most because I found out that they actually consider using different animation styles for each episode, or even basing the look on comic book art by Jack Kirby or Steve Ditko, but finally they settled on a single style inspired by classic American illustrators like J.C. Leyendecker, Norman Rockwell, Tom Lovell, and Mad Schaffer. I mean, they even considered traditional 2D animation, but at the end of the day they abandoned it when Marvel could not find studios who could be able to handle the amount of work necessary to achieve that. So instead they went for a kind of animation that is 3D but is meant to look like it is 2D. And to that I've got two things to say. First of all, are you fucking kidding me? An absolute failure. You wanted to rush this shit so hard that you didn't even bother contacting any of the incredible animation studios working around the world today? Like honestly, fuck you. And second of all, I'm pretty sure that's exactly why the animation on this series looks really awkward at times. Because playing between 2D and 3D animation is just really hard. Okay fine, let's move on from the animation style and move to the narrative. First of all, let's all agree that the first episode is basically a step-by-step -step recreation of the movie Captain America the First Avenger, right? And that's just boring but I do see why they started with that one I mean audiences needed an easy way in to understand the concept of the entire series and I guess that it works but this doesn't make the episode good because it's it's honestly lazily written Captain Carter gets injected with the super soldier serum instead of Steve fine that's cool and fun I accept that but this is still 1940s America and there is no way that Howard Stark would be able to build the Hydra Stomper. And just in case you haven't seen the first episode yet, it's basically the 2008 Iron Man Mark I suit. Honestly, we're not stupid, and you can't use the alternative history excuse because you established that this episode is just a gender-swapped Captain Carter story. So big no-no on that Hydra Stomper bullshit, it's just stupid. The war montage is cool, I will accept that, and I'm really glad that we get to see Captain Carter kicking ass. Thing in a fragile Fraulein to fight for them. Fragile. But once again, it feels very obligatory. It doesn't really feel earned. It feels like the episode is just retelling the same story over again. And it feels kind of stupid because Steve and Peggy Carter are really not the same character and they don't have the same personality at all. So it doesn't make sense that that they would go through the same story, right? But at the end of the day, the narrative threads feel very rushed and end up not having any emotional weight. Like when Carter comes back to the present, so instead of Steve, I didn't feel anything. I really didn't care. And I feel like this could have been fixed in the writing room because if you know that this is going to be a series of 30 minutes episodes, you can't cram in as much plot as possible. I think that this is where the creative team should have learned a lesson or two from Death, Love and Robots and worked with simple ideas which led to big emotional stakes. So instead of having a cascade of what if scenarios in one episode, Episode, you needed only one which generated a new refreshing story but anyways this problem becomes even more apparent in the second episode which explores an alternative story where T'Challa was abducted by Yondu instead of Peter Quill so the team is rushing the narrative once more blending together the lore of Black Panther with several plot lines from Guardians of the Galaxy and even Infinity War and all of a sudden this is not only a story about T'Challa but also a story that answers several questions like what if Thanos was actually part of the Ravagers and was a good boy who loved making hilarious jokes about genocide. My friend, that sounds an awful lot like genocide. No, 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 because it's random. Uh-huh. And I might add, efficient. Wow. Oh, God. I mean... What if Nebula was a good girl too? What if the collector actually collected stuff? What if the children of Thanos didn't work for him, etc, etc, etc. You can imagine all the other stuff. The episode never really deals with real emotional stuff, like for example the consequences of T'Challa believing that his entire family died on Earth. And actually if you look at the real Star-Lord, being an orphan completely defined his personality. 
Well, T'Challa is exactly the same in this episode. He hasn't changed at all, which is just cheap character development in my opinion. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like the soul of the What If Marvel Comics series wasn't only imagining alternative stories and getting weird, it was also subconsciously conveying a bigger message about fate or even about determinism. If you look through most, if not all, of the superior movies and, adap and TV adaptations out there, there is always a theme that comes back, which is the theme of personal sacrifice, of abandoning your desires, your potential happiness for the greater good. So for me, a successful What If series should entertain us, but eventually almost like a Black Mirror episode proved that when you change something within a timeline, chaos always follows. They do it a little bit in the second episode by showing Ego going to visit his son Peter at a random diner on Earth and then the Watcher actually says that since Peter didn't go on his journey and became Star-Lord, he was not able to grow into the person that one day killed Ego and thus Ego consumed Earth. And I really like that, I really want more of that. And it's a shame that Marvel seems so mixed up in its own cinematic universe that it doesn't really go deep into interesting emotional journeys. I think the worst part is that Bradley officially announced that everything going on with the What If series is actually 100% canon, meaning that this is taking place somewhere within the universe that we know, and just knowing that honestly just gives me a headache as a Marvel fan. And listen, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge MCU fan, and this series was clearly made for me. I mean, if you don't have a deep knowledge of everything that is happening, every single film within the MCU, you will miss like 90% of the jokes because this series is literally just that. It's a series of nostalgia nuggets, it goes like this. Oh, do you remember this? Well, it didn't happen here, so that's why Thanos is wearing a scuba diving suit or whatever the fuck. Some part of me really likes that because it's weird, but another part of me, the one that enjoys well-constructed shows and wants something different, doesn't. This series just makes me mad. It feels like someone ate the MCU, chewed it all up for a while, and just spat it at our face. Watch closely. <clears throat> It feels like recycled stories, feels like recycled characters and for the time being because of that I really can't call it fun and I definitely cannot recommend it unless you're a huge MCU fan. Sure, I don't fit into the Deadpool suit anymore, but life is about growth, hormones. I mean, having said that, I know that we're definitely getting a Marvel Zombies episode soon, which could be cool if they actually dare to write an original story instead of just copy and pasting films that we've already seen. I mean, that episode has a character called Zombie Hunter Peter Parker and I really dig that. I'm intrigued. You got me. We're getting an episode about Tony Stark and there are a lot of familiar faces who will be coming back. But as a final point, I think I will talk about the voice cast and I really don't understand why they decided to do an how fast job. Yeah. <sighs> oh God. God damn it. No, I can't say that, can I? I can't say, goddammit. Why are some actors coming back and others are not? I mean, the performances are a bit all over the place. Michael Rooker, for example, at times he sounded exactly like his character of Yondu, and at times he sounded like a completely different person. I just don't get it. And it makes for a very awkward experience. Maybe it's just a marketing move, which is really sad, but the result really doesn't work. So these are my thoughts for Marvel's What If. I hope that it gets better in the next few episodes, but knowing Disney and their animation track record, I really, really doubt it. Let me know what you thought of the first two episodes in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it always helps. I'm Patrick and this is Torn Apart. Yo, this is Patrick coming to you from the future. Telling you that the third episode is shit as well. I actually meant to put this part in the video but then I was like I have nothing interesting or constructive to say about the third episode because it's the same thing over and over and over again. I mean, look at this. Look at it. Can you see it? Oh my god. Like, just look at it. And I bet this is the stupidest thing that you've ever seen in your entire life. Are you ready? I don't think you're ready. Oh. He stole my jokes. He stole my job. He stole my standing ovation. 
ta ta ra da ra ta 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 ra da ra ta ta ra da ra da ra ta ta ra da ra da ra ta ta ra